If a man believes that the good is a matter of arbitrary subjective choice, the issue of good or evil becomes for him an issue of my feelings or theirs. No bridge, understanding or communication is possible to him. Reason is the only means of communication among men and an objectively perceivable reality is their only common frame of reference. When these are invalidated, that is held to be irrelevant in the field of morality, force becomes man's only way of dealing with one another. If the subjectivist wants to pursue some social ideal of his own, he feels morally entitled to force men, quote, for their own good, unquote, since he feels that he is right and that there is nothing to oppose him but their misguided feelings. Thus, in practice, the proponents of the intrinsic and the subjectivist schools meet and blend. It is doubtful whether anyone can hold either of these theories as an actual, if mistaken, conviction. But both ther serve as a rationalization of power lust and of rule by brute force, unleashing the potential dictator and disarming his victims. The objective theory of values is the only moral theory incompatible with rule by force. Capitalism is the only system based implicitly on an objective theory of values, and the historic tragedy is that this has never been made explicit. If one knows that the good is objective, that is, determined by the nature of reality, but to be discovered by man's mind, one knows that an attempt to achieve the good by physical force is a monstrous contradiction in terms, which negates morality at its root by destroying man's capacity to recognize the good that is, his capacity to value. Force invalidates and paralyzes a man's judgment, demanding that he act against it, thus rendering him morally impotent. A value which one is forced to accept at the price of surrendering one's mind is not a value to anyone. The forcibly mindless can neither judge, nor choose, nor value. An attempt to achieve the good by force is like an attempt to provide a man with a picture gallery at the price of cutting out his eyes. Values cannot exist, cannot be valued, outside the full context of a man's life, needs, goals, and knowledge. The objective view of values permeates the entire structure of a capitalist society. The recognition of individual rights implies the recognition of the fact that the good is not an ineffable abstraction in some supernatural dimension, but a value pertaining to reality, to this earth to the lives of individual human beings, not the right to the pursuit of happiness. It implies that the good cannot be divorced from beneficiaries, that men are not to be regarded as interchangeable, and that no man or tribe may attempt to achieve the good of some at the price of the immolation of others. The free market represents the social application of an objective theory of values. Since values are to be discovered by man's mind, man must be free to discover them, to think, to study, to translate their knowledge into physical form, 
to offer their products for trade, to judge them, and to choose, be it a material good or an idea, a loaf of bread or a philosophical treatise. Since values are established contextually, every man must judge for himself in the context of his own knowledge, goals, and interests. Since values are determined by the nature of reality, it is reality that serves as man's ultimate arbiter. If a man's judgment is right, the rewards are his. If it is wrong, he is his only victim. It is in regard to a free market that the distinction between an intrinsic subjective and objective view of values is particularly important to understand. The market value of a product is not an intrinsic value, not a value in itself hanging in a vacuum. A free market never loses sight of the question of value to whom. And within the broad field of objectivity, the market value of a product does not reflect its philosophically objective value, but only its socially objective value. By philosophically objective, I mean a value estimated from the standpoint of the best possible to men that is, by the criterion of the most rational mind possessing the greatest knowledge in a given category, in a given period, and in a defined context. Nothing can be estimated in an undefined context. For instance, it can be rationally proved that the airplane is objectively of immeasurably greater value to man, to man at his best, than the bicycle, and that the works of Victor Hugo are objectively of immeasurably greater value than true confession magazines. But if a given man's intellectual potential can barely manage to enjoy true confessions, there is no reason why his meager earnings the product of his effort should be spent on books he cannot read or on subsidizing the airplane industry if his own transportation needs do not extend beyond the range of a bicycle. Nor is there any reason why the rest of mankind should be held down to the level of his literary taste, his engineering capacity, and his income. Values are not determined by fiat, nor by majority rule. Just as the number of its adherents is not a proof of an idea's truth or falsehood, of an artwork's merit or demerit, of a product's e efficacy or inefficacy, so the free market value of goods or services does not necessarily represent their philosophically objective value, but only their socially objective value, that is, the sum of the individual judgments of all the men involved in trade at a given time, the sum of what they valued, each in the context of his own life. Thus, a manufacturer of lipstick may well make a greater fortune than a manufacturer of microscopes, even though it can be rationally demonstrated that microscopes are scientifically more valuable than lipstick. But valuable to whom? A microscope is of no value to a little stenographer struggling to make a living. A lipstick is. A lipstick to her may mean the difference between self-confidence and self-doubt, between glamour and drudgery. This does not mean, however, that the values ruling a free market are subjective. 